How's it going everyone? It's Lee again from Function Dynamic and in this video what we'll be doing is covering auto filling fields based off of user input because I had recently got a comment on my channel asking uh, how to do it and it is a really good question and it really demonstrates um, the automation capabilities of Zoho and as well as searching for records behind the scenes. So to demonstrate, what I have put together is a simple creator application with two forms. I have form A, and if we look at the report here, this is the form from which we're going to pull data from, and then form B. And form B is going to demonstrate the workflows in action. So for demonstration, I'll show you autofilling from a lookup field right here as well as filling it in from text entry right here. Um, so for example, if I select uh, one at example.com, what I want to do is populate the field below using, if we go over to here, using this data. And to do it is fairly straightforward. And to get started, the first thing you need to do is go over to uh, the edit uh, mode. So. I just jumped through that really quickly. So from here, you would just go to edit this application, select workflow at the top, and you can see that I have a simple disable uh, fields workflow already in place. But what we want to do is create a new one based off of user input. And we want to select form B because this is the form from which we are going to run the workflows on. And now we'll do create or edit it. Uh, this is the important one because we're going to be triggering the workflow on input of a field. And then we'll select the field right here. Um, and to start, we'll choose the lookup field, which is form A. Uh, and we'll name this autofill from lookup and press create. Now, this workflow will include an if-else statement because there are two conditions we have to check. The first one is, if we go over here, the first one is uh, if we, if form A, the lookup, is not blank. So let's say we choose this. The input of form A uh, results in this field being filled with data. Now, another thing to remember, though, is if we just push X, for example, that is also an input where the removal of a previous input, in other words, is also an input in itself. And the logic that comes as a result is a little bit different, which we'll cover. So we'll start off with the if else here. And the first condition what we want to do is check if it is blank if so we'll t start inputs dot form a equals no now we use equals null to check if any number is empty now you might look at this and think it's a little bit strange because going back to the field looking at form a these are not numbers. Um, however, under the hood, they actually are because any lookup field is actually putting the ID, which is a really long number, on the field. These are for users. These are for display purposes. But that is not the data that's actually going on the record. So if we're going to do any workflows based off of a lookup, then and we're, if we're checking whether or not it's blank or not, we're going to do if uh, the field is null, which we see here. And in this condition, so in the braces, we'll say auto filled from lookup equals blank, so a blank string. So if this is blank, then clear this. Now, in the case where it is uh, not blank, what we'll do is we'll start off with a fetch statement. So we'll say record 
uh, we'll say rec equals uh, form form a uh, ID equals uh, inputs dot form a now that I have the uh, records uh, stored in a variable uh, what I can now do is pull um, the specific form data from this record and put it on form B so I'll say input dot uh, auto filled from lookup equals rec dot and as soon as I put rec dot I can see down here that I have access to the two fields on the record as well as any of the other system fields um, but for this we'll just say uses field save it and then if I go over here and push refresh we can see if we select uh, one at example.com, it auto populates it there. Uh, same with two. And um, since we put in the if else condition, if I clear it out, it's also going to clear it out in the form below. So that is fairly straightforward. Now, a little bit more complicated is filling it in with the email field or any other plain text field. Because essentially, what we're going to do goes from a non-search so we already know that these uh, records are in the system for example um, being that they're a lookup but let's say I want to type in uh, test.example.com this is going to be more of a sh search because without the lookup there's no guarantee that um, a fee or a record uh, from form A with the email test.example.com is in there or not. Not the same way it is up above. So we'll work through the logic there. And what I'll do is I'll just, as I am exiting this, I'm going to copy that and create a new workflow. And like before, we'll do created and edited and we'll do user input of a field, but this time we'll say email. This will be the trigger for the workflow and update from email. And then add a new action and to start off, what I'll do is I'll just paste it from above. So uh, we want to do an if else like before, but in this case, we want to do inputs dot email and since this is not a number it's an email field will do equals blank so uh, unlike a number if we're comparing what we say is a string which is a, a set of text um, we use uh, the empty quotations as the the thing to compare to and we'll just change this input down here autofill from email equals blank as well now uh, here is the uh, interesting part so before we were searching by ID because that was what the lookup field was but in this case what we can do is type, put an email and we'll say input.email. Now I'm going to pause right here and cover something really important because there's a big distinction between searching by lookup and by searching by email. Because when we search by lookup using the fetch statement, we know that with an ID, when we're searching by ID, we're either going to get zero records or one record. Now, if you're searching by email, for instance, you may get zero emails, or you might you might get zero records, you might get one record, or you might get a hundred records. So, whenever we start doing searches based off of fields other than the lookup, you have to be very sure that um, what kind of data you're dealing with, if so in this case, what we might want to do is if I go over to edit this application, 
I might want to go into form A and select no duplicate val values. And that will limit the amount of records to either zero or one. If I, if the record requires duplicate values, then you'll have to code in logic for that. Um, so something to be aware of as you're building workflows. For now though, I'll just go back over to here and um, enter this. Even now, even with the mandatory record check in place, the one thing we also have to be aware of is, and I mentioned this earlier, unlike a lookup where we, it's either, there's either a record or there's not a record on input. Even if I put in a, even if I put in a uh, workflow here, there's no guarantee that test at example.com is going to be in the uh, form itself. So we can see and from the form A report that that is in fact the case. So we have to do another check. Um, so we'll say if else And I'll copy this and put it in the else. But let's say if uh, rec dot count uh, equals zero, that means if we don't find any records, we should uh, have some indication to a user. So um, for this, what we'll do is we'll do it in alerts. So we'll say alert uh, no record found. But if there is a record, so if the uh, count is not zero, we'll say uh, input dot uh, auto filled from email equals rec dot use this field. So that is the same. We'll push save, go over to form B and uh, give it a test. So if we say one at example.com and then click out, we can see that it's auto filled from there. So we use a non lookup field to pull data from. Now, if I go over to test.example.com, we can see that there is no record found. And what we also might want to do is um, input dot uh, auto filled from email equals blank. So, so if I so as you can see right here, it's not cleared out. What we might want to do is clear it out. So uh, at example.com, click out. We can see that it's there. Now if I put a an email that doesn't exist, what we will then see is an alert that pops up and this clears out, which is what we see. Whether you already have a creator application, are looking to get started, or just want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to get pointed in the right direction, always feel free to reach out to us at Function Dynamic by going to www.functiondynamic.com, click the Contact Us link, and fill in the Get Started form. Once filled in, you will automatically receive an email with a link to schedule a time that works best for you. This was Lee from Function Dynamic. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.